Also, oh wow. Oh my goodness, guys. I did not expect it to cost that much. That is a stupid price. That is an absolutely dumb price. That's unbelievable. Have you been considering buying a car recently? And are you a student? If yes, is that the best idea? In this video, I'm going to argue against it because I'm going to show you how much it will actually cost you versus the alternatives. Who am I? My name's Nate Gates. I'm a first year media student at Warwick University. And here on this YouTube channel, we cover everything to do with university advice. So be sure to like this video and subscribe. And make sure you stay to the end to see how much a car is actually gonna cost you because you will be surprised. Let's go. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be breaking down the cost of a car for a typical university student. And, well, how am I going to measure that? By measuring how much a car would cost for me, a typical uni student. I've split the costs into six main sections. The initial car cost, how much it costs to actually buy the car. The insurance costs. The fuel costs. The tax. The servicing and maintenance costs. And finally, parking. So I'm actually going to take you through the whole process. I've got my laptop here. And I'm screen recording, so you should be seeing that on your screen about now. Is it working? Am I, am I in a little window? Over here, I've got an incognito tab on Google. Why is it incognito? Because I don't want you staring at all my stuff. It's, it's normal. So, we're going to start with the car cost. Now, for the car itself, we're going to be shopping secondhand. And for that, we're going to be using one of the UK's most popular secondhand car websites, Auto Trader. Now for this, we're going to be calculating how much a car would cost me to commute from my second year place in Leamington Spa to the Warwick University campus. So first it wants me to put in a postcode, so I'll just put in a standard Leamington postcode. Of course, I'm not going to put in my actual postcode, but for this video, we'll put in CV31AA. Now for choosing the actual car itself, I thought it would only be appropriate to choose the most popular car in the UK, which at the time of filming this video is the Ford Fiesta. There we go, Ford and Fiesta. Awesome. We're not going to put in a minimum a maximum price we're just going to see how much they generally cost okay here we go so you can see that they actually vary quite a bit the first one's 10 grand and the second one's 600 but then yeah here we go a little further down you'll see that if you want a relatively recent one you're looking to pay slightly above 2,000 pounds now i'm going to be generous let's say you looked around a bit and you managed to get one for exactly 2,000 pounds let's say this one here 1.25 liter here we go awesome so let's add that to our spreadsheet here we are car costs there we go £2,000, which I'm pretty confident in saying is just about the average price for a usable second-hand UK car, at the moment at least. Okay, so now we've chosen the car, we're going to move on to the second section, the insurance cost. Now, this is a very complicated process and there are a lot of factors at play, so I'm just going to fill this out for me. However, what I can tell you is that I've had absolutely no claims and that I'm a standard starter first car buyer. And actually, if we scroll down on the Auto Trader website, you'll see right here, we've got a very handy link, get a quote, for the Compare the Market website, one of the most popular online quotas here in the UK. Here we are, here's the car, and then here are all the details that I'm going to fill in. So this won't take forever, I'll speed this up for you. Actually, I'll stop really quickly. So where it says, what is the total annual personal mileage for this car? I'm going to say that I'm going to commute once a day from my house in Leamington to Warwick campus and then back again. And for now, I'm going to say that's it. This is the same way I'm going to do the fuel cost later on. So if we type in Google here, Leamington Spa to Warwick campus, we'll see that the most direct route, 14 minutes, is 7.8 miles. Now for simplicity's sake, let's round that up to eight miles. And let's say we do that journey twice a day. Here we go, eight times two. 16. So that's 16 miles a day. And let's say we do that every day for a year. So 16 times 365. There we go, 5,840. We're going to say we do that many miles a year. Now really, I'm being very lenient there. It will usually be more, but for now, we'll put that in. Okay, here we go. So I've put all my details in and it's just working out the quote for me now. So I'll go with the cheapest quote we've gotten, which is £1,721. We'll round that down to 1700 Here we go. Let's put that in, 1700 So now we're going to do fuel costs. Now, looking back at that earlier figure, where we said that I was going to travel 5,840 miles a day, not a day, whoa, a day, that would be mad, 5,840 miles a year, we'll see how much that will cost us in fuel. So first of all, we're going to have to work out the MPG miles per gallon of fuel that this car will cost us. Luckily, on the Auto Trader website, it will work that out for us. If we come down here to running cost, it will give us the figures for us. As you can see, we're going to go with the combined price, because my journey would be somewhat urban, somewhat extra urban. It says, 
49.6 but will run up to 50 just to be even. So at the time of recording this video, fuel prices in the UK are quite high. But we'll round this figure here, 173.46 pence per litre, up to 175, so we get a nice even round number. So we're going to say that there are 4.5 litres in a gallon. Now we're going to divide 50, because it is 50 miles per gallon, by 4.5. Because that should give us how many miles to the litre our car will do. And it's 11.1 recurring. This is where the math gets a little trickier. But if we're saying that I'm going to do 5,840 miles a year, then what I need to do is divide that by 11.1 recurring to see how many litres of fuel I get through. So it looks like I'm going to get through 525.6 litres of fuel. We'll round that to 525. Now, if I do 525 times 1.7346 or 1.75, that should give us how many pounds we're going to spend in a year on fuel. And there we go. 918 pounds and 75p. Really, that's relatively not much for the realistic costs of fuel. We'll round it up to 920. Okay, next we're going to be moving on to how much tax costs. So here on the UK.gov website, it gives us a list of how much different cars will cost in tax a year. It's measured by CO2 emissions, and to find our Ford Fiesta's CO2 emissions out, we'll go back over to the autotrader.co.uk website, where we can see right here our CO2 emissions are 124 grams per kilometre. We can see that because our car is a petrol car, it falls into this band right here because it's between 111 and 130 grams per kilometre, which means our first tax payment will cost £190. And put that straight in the chart. Okay, we're going to move straight on to servicing and maintenance. And for this, I'm going to be very generous and just put in the standard cost for a yearly MOT, which is a car inspection that every car here in the UK has to have at least once a year. And back here on the UK.gov website, we can see here cars up to eight passenger seats, which is a category that my Ford Fiesta falls into, comes to £54.85p, which I'll round up to £55 a year. Now, for this, I'm being extremely generous because I'm going to be honest, when you're buying a £2,000 car and running it on a budget, it's going to break down and it's going to cost you something. But for now, we're just, just the MOT is fine. And that leads us finally on to parking. Now, parking. For this, I'm going to be very generous again. I'm going to say that parking for me is only going to cost as much as it costs to park on my campus once a day for a year. Let's just say that in my house next year, I have a car space free, which most people won't have, but we're just going to say that for now. Now, on Warwick campus, it costs a flat fee every day of £7 to park. And that's parking for all day. So if it's a flat fee of seven pounds a day for parking, the math here is simple, seven times 365. Now I will say only at this point in the video that this is not going to be a leap year. I know a drastic assumption, but we're just gonna say that. Okay, so that comes, oh my goodness, that comes to 2,000. 555 pounds. Okay, so now parking is done. We've finished all the expenses that we're gonna factor in for this video. I would like to say that, you know, with running a car, there are hundreds of different expenses that you have, and it's going to cost different things for every different person. But for me, a typical uni student, as we're saying, this is how much it's going to cost. Okay, so very simple. If we highlight all of our items and come straight over to this icon here and click where it says sum, also, oh, wow. Oh my goodness. I did not expect it to cost that much. Wow. Oh my goodness, guys. Ugh. Okay, 7,000 for... I can't even say 7,420 quid. That's unbelievable. Now granted including in that price we're buying the actual car So that's not how much it will cost a year This is how much it would cost me to straight up buy a car at the start of second year and run it for a year to get to campus And I'm going to go out on a limb here. That is a stupid price. That is an absolutely dumb price I'm sorry, but it is now. I understand as much as the next guy having a car is cool It just is it's fun and it gives you a sense of freedom. Is that freedom worth seven thousand five hundred pounds? No Students are on a budget and if you're watching this and you're a student You're probably on a budget too And I'm sorry This is a time in your life where you have to be smart with your money and that means foregoing luxuries like a car now There are good alternatives. I have a wonderful bus pass My bus pass lets me go anywhere between Leamington and Coventry all the way to Birmingham and it costs me 36 pounds a month, which is a fantastic price. Well, technically every four weeks. So if we divide 36 by four, 
which is nine. It costs me nine pounds a week and times nine by 52, how many weeks are in a year? We get 468. Here we go, let's put that in here. Now, I can tell you for a fact that that bus takes me on the exact same route that car would go. It goes through the exact same traffic and the only inconveniences that I have to take into mind are it only comes at certain times. I may have to deal with the annoyance of it not turning up every once in a while. It stops for other people and of course I have to share the bus with other people. But it also comes with so many benefits. Honestly, right now I love the bus because I'm a busy man. I have a lot of work to do and so I can do it on the bus as I'm commuting from A to B or in this case Warwick to Leamington, Leamington to Warwick. I can do my work as I go. That you can't do in a car, or at least please don't do that whilst you drive. Texting and driving is one thing, but damn, if you're doing an essay, you're just, it's too much, man. That, I mean, I'm sorry, that is just shocking. Let me work out the total difference. So if we take 7,420 and take away 468, that is incredible. You would be saving £6,952 a year. That, that's absurd. And that is me being generous with those calculations. I really have been. Now, buses do also get on my nerves. They, they really do sometimes. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I had the choice between a car and a bus and I got them for the exact same price, I'd take the car. I really would. I Nine times out of ten, I would. But the bus really isn't that much worse, guys. And it's just so much smarter. I don't care who you are. Wasting that kind of money is silly. And heck, you can have proper conversations with your friends on the bus? To be honest, it's just kind of a necessary university experience. In complete summary, do not buy a car at university. It's silly, it's inconvenient, and most of all, it's expensive. Now, I hope I've done all that math right. If I haven't, please don't shout at me. I've worked incredibly hard on this video, but if you liked it and it helped, I would genuinely seriously appreciate you liking the video or subscribing, even commenting gibberish, just anything at this point. I'm a growing channel right now, and I'm putting insane amounts of effort into it and any support is amazing. If you have a chance, go check out either my Instagram or my TikTok. I'm working really hard on those at the moment and in both of them, you may get a glimpse of my actual university life instead of me just kind of sat in this room. Apart from that, I haven't really got anything else to say. Okay, I'm not even joking. It was then that my camera decided to break. Stay awesome, don't buy a car, and just remember, if nothing else, that I love you, I believe in you, and I'll see you soon. So warm in here. It's unbelievably warm in here.